If you've ever read a book or watched a movie set in the Victorian era, it is likely that you've encountered the following type of character. They come from a well-off family and suffer from a vague, never-explained illness that does not seem to go away, leaving them constantly weak and bedridden. Perhaps they might be sent to the countryside for clean air and recovery time. Yet upon returning home, the illness would persist. So, what was going on? The short answer is, they were being poisoned. While there were many diseases that ran rampant during the 1800s, the lack of medical knowledge and treatments meant that people suffered much more than they do in our modern age. But the Victorians were a special case, because not only did they need to worry about catching a common illness, they also had to worry about living an everyday life surrounded by poison. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Historidame, and today we're discussing the Victorian arsenic problem. Despite the fact that it had been a well-known poison for many years, arsenic was everywhere in the Victorian era. Since it was largely unregulated for much of the 19th century, arsenic was available to everyone, being a common item that you could pick up at your local grocery store. It was used in all facets of life, as a pest killer in homes, as a treatment by doctors, and as a major ingredient in many dyes and paints which resulted in the substance being present in household items. Wallpaper, clothing, candles, hat ornaments, gift wrapping, even children's toys. All of these things could contain arsenic, and the average Victorian would have no way of knowing until it was too late. So why was this the case? Well, the prevalence of arsenic can largely be attributed to the popular colors of the time. Shields Green, Magdala Red, Perkins Mauve, Martius Yellow and Paris Green were colors that were widely used during the Victorian age, due to their vibrant pigment. All were made with arsenic and all could be deadly. Shields Green, named for the Swedish chemist who invented it, was arguably the most popular of these colors and was considered to be very fashionable, especially in clothing and home decor. But exposure to these arsenic-based paints could cause some serious health complications. Acute symptoms include vomiting, abdominal pain, and digestive trouble, followed by numbness, tingling, and muscle cramps. Exposure to arsenic over a longer period of time can cause further weakness in the hands and feet, a reduced white blood cell count, skin lesions, and, if the dose was high enough, eventual death. The Victorians were literally poisoning themselves in tiny amounts every day of their lives, thanks to these arsenic-based pigments. Unfortunately, despite the fact that people knew arsenic was poisonous, they were largely misinformed. Since it was prescribed in small doses by doctors, many believed that these small amounts would not cause sickness. And due to the lack of definitive evidence and consumer demand, arsenic-based colors remained popular well into the 20th century. One of the most prominent examples of arsenic use in the Victorian era is patterned wallpaper. While minimalism is the common trend these days, the Victorians employed, in what is my opinion, the far superior maximalism. Vibrant colors, intricately carved furniture, and detailed patterns were all common during the craze for opulent interior design. Patterned wallpaper in colors such as Shields Green were especially popular, and the Victorians would plaster this poison-laced paper all over their homes. Aside from their brilliant color, arsenic-based paints and wallpapers were also popular because their toxic nature kept insects like ants and termites from getting into your home. Unfortunately, arsenic was effective at killing more than just bugs. The first warning bells for this craze would sound as early as 1839, when a German chemist warned that damp rooms covered in Shields Green had the potential to produce a toxic acid within the walls. Shortly after his report was published, four children had already died in London of respiratory distress after their room had been papered in green. Tests on the wallpaper found three grains of arsenic per square foot, a lethal dose. In 1862, there was another case, where children in East London died after they tore down wallpaper and licked the green off its surface. Naturally, 
Incidents such as these caused some wariness towards the once alluring Shields Green. But the fundamental misunderstandings of arsenic at the time resulted in people believing that you could only be poisoned if you licked the walls directly. But for those that weren't avid wall lickers, merely being in a room surrounded by arsenic-laced wallpaper could still have disastrous consequences on your health. As was predicted in 1839, when arsenic wallpaper is exposed to humidity, it can produce a toxic gas. When left untouched in drier conditions, it could release flakes of arsenic into the air, poisoning all who breathe it in. This was especially dangerous for vulnerable individuals, such as children, the elderly, and pregnant women. There were many documented cases of children in green bedrooms wasting away little by little as they ingested tiny amounts of poison over a long period of time. Shields Green is even suspected to have played a part in Napoleon's death. During his exile on St. Helena, Napoleon lived in a house in which the rooms were painted his favorite color, bright green. While the cause of his death is believed to have been stomach cancer, arsenic is a known carcinogen, and prolonged exposure to it can lead to the development of some types of cancer. Samples of his hair were tested and discovered to contain significant amounts of arsenic. Although some were lucky to live in a house that was not actively poisoning them, many were still not safe from the dangers of arsenic. That is because arsenic-based colors like Shields Green were not only popular within home decor, but also with clothing. Before the widespread usage of arsenic dyes, producing a bright green garment was a tricky process. Fabric had to be dyed yellow first, then dyed again with blue over top. Because of this two-step process, getting consistency from batch to batch was difficult, and the resulting green garments had a high price tag. It was due to this reason that green clothing was seen as a statement of wealth for a very long time. Once arsenic came into the picture, however, the popularity and availability of green exploded. There were reports of women with new dresses falling ill and swooning in droves. Those who favored a green dress might experience more intensive symptoms, but they were not alone. Green might have been the most popular color, but arsenic was still used in many others, such as deep blue, purple, and red. And it wasn't just dresses either. These colors were also common in shoes, hats, coats, and stockings. Unlike wallpaper, the effects of arsenic poisoning were not as immediate with clothing. Even if a gown contained arsenic pigments, the wearer would only absorb a small dose, since the fabric rarely came in direct contact with skin, thanks to the many layers of undergarments worn beneath it. Stockings, however, were a more concerning problem. Many contained more arsenic than clothing, and since they were worn directly on the skin, they caused more frequent side effects. While not as deadly as wallpaper, arsenic-covered fabrics could still cause minor prolonged illness, skin irritation, and lesions. A report done in the 1890s revealed that around 20% of dress goods contained more than 3 milligrams of arsenic per square meter. But aside from the well-off folks who could afford to buy deadly wallpaper and poisonous clothing, the people who suffered the most for this trend were the poor and working-class individuals that had to make these products. House painters, construction workers, laundresses, and factory workers were the real victims here. Sure, many of the upper-class people who consumed these arsenic-based products did not know the dangers that they were putting themselves in, but it is likely that even more didn't even pay a second thought to who was dying so that they could have them. With the Industrial Revolution came mass factory production, but during the Victorian era, there was little to no regulation, safety equipment, or monitoring to protect these factory workers. In the case of one factory that made artificial flowers, 100 girls were employed whose jobs made them risk painful cracking on the skin of their fingers, ulcers, and the deformed bending of their arms. 26 of these girls presented other symptoms of chronic poisoning, and one even died after months of suffering from ulceration. Of the 100, only four appeared to be symptom-free. 
Painters in factories were often encouraged to stick their paintbrush in their mouth in order to get the bristles into a sharp point. Directly consuming arsenic paints this way caused many deaths. A particularly haunting case is that of Matilda Shire. Matilda was a fake flower maker, whose job was to dust Shields Green onto the leaves of artificial flower crowns with her bare hands. On November 20th, 1861, the girl reportedly began vomiting green waters, while convulsing and foaming at the mouth, nose, and eyes. Tragically, she would die shortly after, and the post-mortem would confirm that her death was caused by arsenic poisoning. A report from the London Times later revealed that each flower crown she had worked on contained enough arsenic to kill 20 people. It was cases like Matilda's that inspired demands from workers for their factory owners to provide safer working conditions. It wasn't until the Factory Workshop Acts of 1883 and 1895, however, that the British Parliament passed any sort of regulations for the conditions of factories where workers used arsenic. The rights and safety of factory workers is a battle that is still fought even today, though luckily things are leagues better than they were in the Victorian era. Today, we have little to worry about when it comes to daily arsenic poisoning. If you are a fan of antiquing, however, be wary that your new Victorian product might contain arsenic. And if you ever buy an old house, do not, under any circumstances, lick the wallpaper. Hey everyone, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like or a comment down below. If you want to see more content like this, you can also subscribe to my channel and keep up to date on all the fun history videos of the future. But for now, I bid you farewell.